skulk blocks added in Minecraft 1.19 have a ton of things you can do with them, like making an automatic door, getting an infinite source of XP, or even making a spooky hallway. Learn 20 insane uses of skulk in this video. You can make a light up dance floor in Minecraft with skulk blocks and redstone lanterns. Start by picking out the area that you want to have this dance floor in, and then dig down two blocks and surround the edge of that in two wool blocks. Then on the bottom of that, place down as many skulk sensors as you want for the size of this dance floor. For this one, I'm going to do 64 as it is an 8x8 dance floor. And once you're done, place on top of them all your redstone lamps directly on top of the skulk sensors so that when they receive a signal, these blocks will light up. And now we have our skulk dance floor and you can see if we walk in it, it'll light up to show that. And our movement is portrayed in the lanterns there. And especially the more you move and in interesting ways, let's say somewhat at the corners, you'll notice you can get better and better patterns. And because of the wool around the edge, that dance floor will not light up until you've jumped on it. An insane use of Skulk is the fact that you can easily convert the deep dark biome into an infinite source of XP. First, just find your deep dark biome and go up to all the Skulk Shriekers and break them. What you can also do is you can fully surround them on every single side with wool. Although of course this doesn't always work depending on where your Skulk Shrieker is placed. And so be careful that you do not set any of them off. But once the Skulk Shriekers are gone, then the Deep Dark Biome is a fully peaceful mode and safe biome where no hostile mobs can spawn. Then all you have to do is go through this Deep Dark Biome with a Iron Hoe or better, and you can infinitely mine these Skulk Blocks, gaining a massive amount of XP in the process. And you can see right here I'm just getting more and more levels, much faster than you could with an ordinary mob XP farm, and even rivaling the XP gain of let's say an Enderman farm. One of the funnest things to do with the Skulk Sensor is to make a trap. We're just gonna dig underground here a little bit. You want to place this in an area where you know the person you're trying to trap will often walk over, maybe underneath a path. And you want to mine a very large way underneath here, so that when you block this back up it does not trigger that sensor. Then dig up to make sure you're right above the ground, and basically fully fill this area in with TNT like I'm doing right here. Of course you can use as much or as little as you want, but the more TNT there is, the more damage it'll cause. Now the one part where you have to be careful, place down that skulk sensor and slowly crawl away, and make sure that your exit is far away enough from that sensor that it does not trigger the TNT. Now you can go up here, block this area off, the grass will grow over there, and then the next unsuspecting person walks by just normally. They'll have literally no way of doing the traps there until they hear it, and then all that TNT will explode instantly, blowing them up. Here's a great way to see how active someone is on a multiplayer server. Go up to their door and place a singular skulk vein on it. And ideally you want to place it on whatever side of the door the player is not going to be using. This definitely works the best on a door like this. And let's say the player last logged off here. What you could do is you could place a skulk vein on the outside. But when they're in their house here and they finally log in and they open the door, they will see something break, although they probably won't know what it is. And they'll just think that's weird and continue on. But now when you come by and you notice there's not that skulk vein on the door, you will see that that player has logged in. And you could even use this just to see what buildings players are going in and out of, or maybe even what houses villagers are going in and out of. Let's say in this village here, we could see which village houses are actually actively occupied or not, by simply placing a skulk vein on the door of each one, and whatever houses have these skulk veins still there after let's say maybe a couple days, you'll know those houses have no villagers that are using them. You can make a really cool security system out of skulk. As an interesting example of that, let's place down the skulk sensor on the villager house's roof and place a water bucket on it. That'll make it so that it'll make no noise when something activates it. So for instance, going here, there will be that particle, but that's all. And of course, in an area like this where anything could set it off, that's not very ideal. But let's say if you have a massive base, you could place this down one of the entrances, place down a dispenser, and inside of it place a lava bucket or maybe a piece of TNT. And then you have a system where if a player is not being careful, they're going to walk into a certain area, and they may not realize what's going on until it's too late. But when they die, the lava will go back into the dispenser, as that will cause another signal. With just a couple skulk sensors, a trap door, and some glass, you can make a pet warden trap. Simply go up to a skulk shrieker and trigger it four times to get yourself the warden to summon in. Then go to the place where you want that warden to be. 
place down two of those skulk sensors and place a trapdoor beneath them. What will happen is that trapdoor will flip on and off like this, and you'll notice it's sending signals to the warden, which will be fully distracted by it. So unless you touch the hitbox of the warden, nothing you can do will make the warden chase you instead of that. Just go around the warden placing glass, making sure not to touch its hitbox and you can make a cage for that warden just to be 100% sure that it won't be able to notice you. And you can finish by placing the top. Just be aware if you do place a glass block that happens to touch the head of the warden, it will then switch into trying to track you and you'll know that because it'll start sniffing. But if it does do this, you can simply run away as the warden is now trapped just outside of that 20 block radius. And after a couple minutes, it'll become passive again. Now on from the dangerous side of the skulk to the more decorative. If we surround an area down beneath a patio or maybe porch area that we've built in our world. Then we place down a skulk sensor and a redstone lamp on top of this and continue this pattern with the skulk surrounded by wool with the sensor and having the top of it be the redstone lamp. Then we can have this super great and decorative patio lantern that will only light up when we're over it. And if you do not like the sound, you can always put a water block on that skulk sensor to make it be waterlogged and that'll cause there to be no sound. But these motion activated lights that stay on for actually quite a while after you've activated them are a really great decorative piece to any patio or porch build you have. As in real life there is some motion activated patio lanterns like this that make a super cool display and because they only light up when you're right next to them you can have this really fancy effect. Another great decorative use of a different skulk block is that it looks sort of like the night sky, stars, space, something like that. It actually does also bear a resemblance to the end gateway or the end portal, which is funny as the color scheme of the end portal blocks really does look a lot like the color scheme of some of the skulk blocks. But either way, if you place down some end stone to make it sort of look like the surface of the moon, and then you fully surround it in a whole bunch of the skulk blocks, and also place skulk blocks on the roof and even finish this by placing down a waterlogged jungle leaves, which sort of resembles the earth. You can make this awesome decoration where it looks like we're sort of walking on the surface of the moon. We have the night sky around us and it's even glowing and twinkling, which makes it look more like stars. And when we look up towards the sky, instead of seeing the moon, we see Earth as we're standing on the moon. Now the ancient city's loot chests can be disappointing, but surprisingly enough, the treasures you can find in the deep dark biome itself can sometimes be better. So simply find yourself a large cave full of deep dark blocks that does not have any shriekers nearby, and if there are shriekers, just surround them in wool or break them. Then using an iron hoe, you can break all these blocks. What will be revealed underneath them, or at least could be, is different ore blocks. So you could find diamonds, you could find redstone, you could find gold or lapis, or really any block that would occur this deep underground. Maybe even rarely you would find yourself some deep slate iron. And you can see already we found a whole massive amount of ores. And so simply using something as simple as a iron hoe and an iron pickaxe, you can super effectively mine items. What's also great is this is not effective by the air exposure rule, which means that diamonds will generate underneath the skulk you mine as frequently as they would generate in blocks you've mined up in a strip mine. Here's a cool way to use skulk to add some interest to your builds. Let's say right here we walk into the door and you'll notice a book appears. Now of course right here we have a library, so this could show that there are books actively sitting in the library that are being read. Now the real question is, how did I make this? Well now that I've broken the blocks in the floor, it's super simple. You can see right underneath the door where we would be entering in, we have a skulk sensor that's waterlogged so that we cannot hear it. And there are also wool blocks all around it, so that's only triggered when we enter in the house. We have a comparator reading this block so that we can easily get the signal from there. And all you'd have to do to make a certain signal unlock this is simply place the repeater at a certain distance from this comparator. So let's say a signal of 3 is the one that you'd want to unlock this. Simply place it right here. From that repeater, it goes over here to this dispenser that would be dispensing an item into this bookshelf that would sort of float on top of it or float to the side of it. Certain mob spawners in Minecraft, like let's say the poison spider spawner or even just the spider spawner in general, can often feel somewhat useless and a waste of time. But something you can do to that spawner or any spawner to make it more interesting is place a skulk catalyst nearby them. And you want to have a large open area like this with tons of standard overworld blocks. Right beneath their dying place, you can see that skulk spreads 
And so as we kill more and more of these spiders, more and more skulk grows around here. And if we're in an area that does not have any skulk in it normally, this is a really great way of farming it. But it's especially good for farming visual shriekers as well as the sensors because when they generate like this there's a small chance of the shriekers as well as the sensors to generate around here and so there are ways of making automatic shrieker and sensor farms with this something i really like to make in minecraft is what i call a skulk sensor telephone now it's not exactly a phone but something that's really cool that you can do is you can communicate messages using skulk sensors as the transportation of that current I can set up something like this. For instance, you can see we have here trails of skulk sensors that go from sensor to trapdoor to sensor to trapdoor with seven blocks in between the trapdoor and the next sensor. And the redstone at the end here could do anything we want. Maybe it could send items back to us or maybe it could communicate a message and an easy way of communicating a message in Minecraft is with fireworks. Although the lever does not directly power the sensor, its vibration signal does make it turn on. So basically in this scenario, let's say orange orange meant danger, we could flick that, and let's say red meant the danger was pillagers, they would get that orange firework and then the red firework, as of course the distance here can be as long as you like, as long as those chunks are loaded. Or maybe yellow would mean we just got a lot of riches, and gold would mean that those riches were emeralds. One of the best things about Skulk is its wireless capabilities, and this is especially useful in something like a large sugarcane farm. So for instance, we can see here we have a singular observer that is connected to all those pistons. And instead of having to have a massive and complicated redstone line that would travel from this side of the farm all the way to the other side of the farm, we have an awesome system where basically if the block here is detected by the observer, both sides will break at the exact same time because of the wireless signal. And of course you can see right here that skulk sensor is being set off. However, because obviously there would not normally be players running around your automatic sugarcane farm, and ideally they would be quite isolated, the system actually works surprisingly well. Here's a great prank to play on your friends with the skulk shrieker and the skulk sensor. Start by digging out a space and placing down as many skulk shriekers as you can get. Of course these blocks can be somewhat rare, but overall finding a decent Recently large number of them isn't too difficult, especially if you just raided a deep dark biome. Just make sure to break them all with silk touch at first when you are collecting them. Then cover the area in non-suspicious blocks, and in the center place a skulk sensor and then a block on top, something like this. And so basically we have an incredibly creepy trap. We're going to walk through this somewhat scary looking forest at midnight. As we walk through it, we're going to hear this deafening shriek. And basically the more shriekers you have, the louder it is. But overall it's an incredibly freaky and great prank. Especially if you put water over top of that sensor, then you can make it even more invisible and players will only be hearing those crazy shrieks wondering where in the world they're coming from. Speaking of creepy things, you can do a skulk. You can make a very creepy flickering light effect inside of a cave. And so if you notice right here on the roof, we have those redstone lanterns that are spookily turning on as we walk, but because the entire rest of the cave is dark, it really makes this scary effect, where basically we can only see around ourselves and nowhere else. All you have to do is dig two blocks above the base level of the cave, place down the skulk sensors like this, then waterlog them, and you'll notice no water actually escapes from the bottom, so it's quite easy. Then place the redstone lamps on the bottom of them, and you'll notice they'll silently flicker on and off. Now if you want the sound, just do not waterlog it, but if you don't, you can have it like that. Another awesome thing you can do with skulk sensors is make an automatic door. And so whenever I go through the door, it'll automatically open. And the way this works is we have a sensor right here connected up with redstone to a torch that's going to always power these on. And the wool here stops this sensor from being turned on by that. So if we, let's say, break this piece of wool, what'll happen is I would form a clock where basically the door will open and close consistently, which is, of course, what we do not want to happen. So I'll place that wool block there. And then basically we have a working automatic door that is fully wireless and makes your base seem a lot more modern. It's also quite compact. You could probably make it even more compact than this. 
And depending on where your skulk sensor is, you could either make it one way like this door is, or two way where whatever direction you go through that skulk sensor will pick it up and let you through the door. And so I would say really any situation in which you do something wireless, especially like a door, the skulk sensor is the perfect option for either making a redstone signal travel or even just for picking it up in the first place. One other great use of the skulk vein is to sort of make things have the pattern of something like a magma block, which is sort of like lava and that netherrack texture. So for instance here we could place down some blocks of different items and put that skulk vein on top and more or less we can use this to transform an existing block into a whole new type of block which is really a revolutionary build technique as obviously the number of blocks in Minecraft is quite limited but with these skulk veins on top of it, especially depending on what type of block it is, you can really make this transform into what looks like a whole different type of block. Or you could even use the skulk veins just as a skulk vein, where basically you're making it look like skulk is slowly taking over your builds. Here's a great way to do a long-term troll on your friend. Find one of their mob farms and dig beneath it a little bit. And once you're beneath it, simply cover it up like that. And then basically make a small space underneath here so that there's lots of applicable areas for a skulk catalyst to grow to. Then go to that center spot and put that skulk catalyst and put an observer facing that. And then surround the entire area in all the TNT that you have. Basically that skulk catalyst will not grow to the areas around it unless your friend kills one of the mobs in its mob farm. And so as long as there's a block that that skulk catalyst can grow to, the observer will sense that it made something happen and all the TNT will blow up. So let's try that right now. Just minding our own business, we're going up to our pig farm to kill some of our pigs. And we'll probably notice that that skulk grew there and we'll wonder why. We will not notice and will not expect is for all that TNT to explode. Imagine you arrive to what you think are defenseless castle walls, but you are actually shot in the face with a bunch of arrows. When you try and see how they're sensing that you're there, you look around, you cannot hear it, you cannot find it. And so basically you'll either die of the arrows or at least be somewhat damaged in this fairly decent castle defense. Well, what's going on here? Basically, we have a redstone line going back here that powers these dispensers full of arrows. Arrows can be shot through dispensers even if they have a trapdoor in front of them, and so we can safely have those be hidden like that, so it'll take a minute for players to realize what's going on. Then the redstone line back here that is extended so it doesn't run out goes back here to a comparator and repeater that are connected up to a waterlogged skulk sensor so you do not hear it and so it's much harder to find it and deactivate it and you can see connected to that we have this comparator and repeater and so basically whenever that senses anything it'll fire all those zeros which will very promptly kill anything in front of it and so it's the perfect way to have this wall of arrows defense. Making redstone travel vertically can be very difficult with things like let's say observer chains being the best option compared to maybe a towering staircase of redstone in a zigzag pattern of slabs but now there's an even faster way to make redstone travel basically utilizing the same functions as the skulk telephone we have a skulk going up to a note block which functions like the trapdoor then seven blocks of space then skulk a note block, seven blocks of space, and so on and so forth. And it is quicker than this observer line, so if we break the bottom observer and we look up here, we'll see which firework launches first, the firework on the left does, and then only after a couple more seconds do we get the firework on the right, which proves the skulk is much, much faster than the speed of the observer line. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video about all these things you can do with skulk in Minecraft. Feel free to comment down below your favorite use of Skulk, like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!